Uh, and the next one up is Kristen from Control by Onyx. Kristen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, hi, everyone. I'm so glad to have so many of you here um, yet this afternoon. Um, I'm excited to talk with you about some new resources from Control Bionics. I will show you exactly where to get those at the end of my time. Um, I am a speech pathologist and the clinical education for Control Bionics. And instead of starting off using slides, I'm actually just going to try and paint a picture for you. Um, the picture is of Alex. If Alex sounds familiar to you, even if there are things that change like the age or gender or maybe the diagnosis, leave a, a comment in the chat window. So my Alex is 13. He has a diagnosis of cerebral palsy. He uses a wheelchair for transportation, but also finds himself in multiple different positions throughout the day, including a stander, side lying, um, maybe some um, supported seating positions. Um, Alex makes big, very purposeful movements with his arms. Um, often they take a little while to get started. He also has uncontrolled movements and reflex patterns that kick in sometimes. So we definitely have a combination of movements here. Alex has a few words that familiar per, uh, communication partners understand, but most of his communication um, is through facial expression, body movement, um, and vocalizations. He does have a fairly consistent eye blink for yes and head shake for no. So Alex has been in a school for individuals with a wide variety of disabilities for most of his career. Um, and as a result, he has had access to just about every switch and just about every communication device possible over the course of his years there. Um, his team has really worked hard to give him really good opportunities to use these and also has looked for new things as they have come out. Um, currently, He's using a step-by-step -step communicator to participate in kind of repetitive and routine classroom activities. He also has a pod book that um, he uses through partner-assisted scanning when he's in more of a one-on-one -on -one communication environment. I see at least one of you can relate to this. That's great. Um, Alex's speech pathologist, and maybe it was his OT or his teacher, um, attended ATIA in January, and they saw the Neuronode by Control Bionics. So in case you are unfamiliar, like they were prior to ATIA, the Neuronode is a sensor, I'm holding it up here, that works as a switch with communication software. Now, this sensor is different than... Um, any switches that they had used to date. And that's because it works in two different ways. The first way, and it's wearable, number one. So I can put this on any body part with this band, or I can actually use electrodes to attach it at different parts of the body. Yes, this is the NeuroNote from Control Bionics. Um, it operates either using EMG, which is electromyography, or an accelerometer. So with EMG mode, it's actually picking up on the electrical activity associated with muscle movement. So if I'm moving my finger, there is electrical activity that's happening here in my arm that I can pick up on and turn into a switch. I can do this with any movement, no matter how small, um, or even sometimes just the intention of a movement. So if someone is trying to smile, and we don't actually see it, it still could trigger that electrical activity. We could use that movement as a way to access a communication device. The second option for how the neuro node works is in what we call spatial mode. And that's looking for changes in the plane in space. So we have a lot of individuals who maybe can tap their toe and that change in the position in space triggers the neuro node to work as a switch. Sometimes people will turn their hand um, we can go up and down, front and back, side to side, any of those changes in the position of, of the, the neuro node in space can be triggered um, to work as a switch. So Alex's team saw this and they decided that since it was different from what they'd tried before and it seemed like it might be simpler for Alex to use, um, then it might be something that's good for him to try. 
Uh, and of course the dog chooses to bark the minute that I start talking. Sorry about that. Um, how small could the electrodes be? Could it be placed on the upper cheek? Yes, absolutely. We sometimes use what we call um, neonatal um, electrodes. So they're designed for use on little babies and they're very small and we'll do a cheek placement. Sometimes we'll put them on the temple. So yes, we can use small electrodes as well. Um, so Alex's team didn't know if they needed electrodes or not, but they wanted to give it a try. So they called in the control bionics um, consultant who came out. Alex had a chance to use the NeuroNode and he was able to use it in conjunction with the, the um, control bionics trilogy device, which is our device that uses grid three software. Um, he was able to use it to play some games, to do some simple communication well enough that his team decided they wanted to do a longer trial with it. So I think based on some other comments that I've seen that this is sounding relatively familiar. Um, maybe a lot of you have had a student or a client who has tried everything and not had a ton of success. Um, or maybe a new student or a new client with very minimal movement. Um, all of these are kind of where we're going with this example here today. So the key points of the scenario are, we have an individual who's had minimal success using AAC despite multiple attempts by a knowledgeable team. Um, he does seem to understand the concept of auditory scanning because he's been using that with his pod book, but he hasn't had success with consistent activation of a switch. And we have a team that's gonna be supporting a communication system that they don't have a ton of experience with. Control Bionics, the NeuroNode's been around for a while, but it is still newer in the grand scheme of AAC. Um, so this is the exact scenario that these trial period resources that I'm going to share with you now were created for. Um, at least this initial version, and I'll talk to you more about that at the very end. So before I share my software, I did see that there was one other question um, about the NeuroNode itself. Are you able to use two access points for say two switch scanning? And yes, we are able to do that. Oftentimes it'll be done with a wired switch and with the NeuroNode, it could be done with two NeuroNodes, but that involves a different level of expense and, and things that we can talk about um, another time. So let me go ahead and share here. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and then share some PDFs because the trial period resources are really uh, two parts. Um, a series of PDFs that you can download and use electronically or print out and then also pages for the Grid3 software. So the six PDF resources include or start with this pre-trial worksheet. The purpose of this worksheet is twofold. First, the goal is to help set expectations for the trial period. Trial periods often involve a wide variety of people who may or may not have the same focus, who may or may not understand that during a trial period, I, you'll hear me talk about a four week trial period. I know not all trial periods are four weeks. That seems to be fairly typical for insurance based uh, or trial periods that insurance companies insurance recommend company. require, but it could be different. Um, but not everyone has the same expectations. And so this pre-trial worksheet talks a little bit about what the trial period is designed for and actually what it's not designed for to help set those expectations that while someone is using something that they've only been exposed to for a short period of time, we're not expecting mastery. So that's some general information. Um, the rest of this pre-trial worksheet is really designed to collect specific or information about the individual who will be using the device during the trial. So some of this relates to how the device will be set up, but some of it relates to what we want to see what are the goals, what are the expectations, what are the outcomes that we're hoping to see at the end of the trial period. And for teams who need support on that, there are some suggestions for where to go to look for resources, um, look for goals, uh, how to contact the control bionics representative um, for questions.
there really isn't anything other than maybe some terminology on this pretrial worksheet that would limit you to using it just with Control Bionics products. It is pretty basic outline information for a trial period, just like the trial summary is. I'm going to skip to kind of the end of the process where we would um, use this as a guide to help write up what happened during the trial period. And then it provides some examples of actually of how to summarize that information, especially if we're going to insurance for a new device. Now, let me move my screen slightly so I can access really what is the bulk of the lesson plans. There are four individual lesson plans that are set up all the same way. They start off with a goal for that week, directions on how to find this information on the Trilogy device, descriptions of all the activities that are being provided for that week, what will happen during those, how many switch activations you might get, how you need to maybe make some changes while you're interacting, tips over here on the right-hand side that include things like how to provide prompts as needed, maybe how to make some changes, what kind of language to use, and then also a data collection sheet. I think sometimes the hardest part of data collection isn't actually data collection, it's knowing what to collect. And so there are some suggestions in here on what you might want to collect. If we switch over into the Grid3 software, um, all of the trial devices that come from Control Bionics have in the scanning or the NeuroNode user, which is kind of our target for this product or for this um, resource, trial week one through trial week four folders here. Trial week one, the whole goal is to get lots and lots and lots of, lots of opportunities to use a switch in fun and airless environments. If you're familiar with Grid3 software, you've seen these, but I've modified them so that anything I do, any switch activation I make either starts the scan or in this case, makes something happen. Ah. After that happens, I go on to the next one. As soon as I hit my switch, something else happens. In week one, we're really just looking for lots and lots of opportunities to activate the switch and make something happen. In week two, we're looking for lots and lots of airless opportunities to hit the switch and make things happen, but we also want to involve communication. So all of these, instead of making something happen on the screen, let's play Simon Says. Simon Says. Me. Every time I hit my switch, it gives something specific that I want somebody else to do. In week three, we're combining these similar activities, some that are making things happen on the screen, some that are communicative, but now there's choices involved so that we're building on communication. We're trying to build success here. That's why we're doing this really slowly. And then trial week four brings in some of the traditional communication pages that are part of Grid3, except you don't have to go searching for them. Part of what I'm trying to do is make this easier for the teams that are supporting individuals. And by pulling out these specific pages and putting them here in one place, it makes it a little bit easier. I've also made it so that each of these has an auditory cue in case we're using auditory scanning. I see a ton of questions. I'm gonna show you one more thing and then I'll go back and see how many of those questions that I can answer. So in case you're interested in finding this, you have a direct link to download this on your handout, but it's controlbionics.com, that's our website. And under resources, you'll see device trials. Here, you can go in and see what all is involved and then fill out a form to access the PDFs. If you want to get a loaner device so you can use the trial grid sets, you can click on yes here and we'll have someone contact you about that. My email tends to be on all of these resources because I would love to know, number one, how I can make it better 
And number two, where to go next? We have lots of different people that use control bionics devices. And so I'd love to know what kind of scenario or profile we would utilize next. Um, let's see, how do I access yeah. this? Kristen, we're at, we're, we're at time. Yeah. So you should, you should answer those um, questions in the chat area. Absolutely. 